tell us a little bit about what the film's about. I, I mean, it's, it's sort of an inflammatory, no pun intended, area in culture, but I wonder, tell us what your film's about and if you expected this kind of response. You know, the long story short is I started out to kind of make a supersize me doc uh, that I was going to be a guinea pig and see whether or not the anti-doping system worked because I kind of had this notion that after Lance Armstrong confessed, when you look behind it, here's a guy who had tested clean 500 times. And while society was kind of thinking that they had caught him, he actually was never caught. At least he wasn't caught by how he was supposed to be caught, which was through the testing system and the science. So I was, uh, I've been a lifelong passionate cyclist, and I was always curious about it and, and what these drugs do, what they don't do. And so I was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool to to make a movie, I'm gonna go through this a year clean, then I'm gonna dope myself, but not only am I gonna dope myself, I'm gonna get scientists and doctors to advise me, and I'm gonna figure out how to evade positive detection and see whether or not I can essentially, you know, Lance Armstrong it. So in the process of doing this, I get put in touch with this guy, Gregory Rachenkov, mm -hmm. and he's the at the time running the third largest WADA lab, which is the World Anti-Doping Association Agency uh, laboratory in Moscow. And he had just finished doing all the testing for the Sochi Olympics, and he's running all of Russia's uh, laboratory for anti-doping, for dope testing. And he agrees, which is a whole other story, uh, to help me and advise me what drugs to take, when to take them, how to take them to evade positive detection. And so we strike up this friendship. I meet him in Oregon. He comes to Los Angeles. We're Skyping back and forth. I go to Moscow. And all this time, I'm going, oh, my God, I've got the scientist who's, you know, Russia's anti-doping lab. He should not be doing this. What, what am I going to do? Insider trading. And I'm, and I'm already in the conundrum of this is crazy. This guy's going to lose his job. I mean, what, I'm, I'm filming the whole thing. And lo and behold, um, while we're in pros process of filming, uh, a German television documentary breaks, and it's alleging that all of Russian athletes are doping. But it's just allegations. And it's alleging that my guy is essentially kind of you know, one of the top dogs behind it. Um, but I kind of make a choice that, okay, I don't want to turn into like investigative journalist with him because he's helping me fulfill my goal, which is evade doping controls, you know, supersize me. I'm on this message. I've got this guy who's going to help me and I'm not going to start, you know, coming at him like I'm the police. Next thing I know, I cut to a year later, it's uh, November 9, 2015, and this 335 page report comes out. And in this report, it's alleging that he's the mastermind of Russia's, you know, state-sponsored doping program. But the report is confined to only track and field. That was the mandate to what to investigate. And we have this friendship. We're Skyping. And a day after this report breaks, he's resigned from the lab. And he's telling me that I am the only man that can kill the Olympics. I'm the only man who can kill Russia. I'm the only man who can kill WADA. No pressure. He's like, he's like and they're going to kill me. He's like, I've got FSB oh agents God. living in my home. And so over a period of like five days, we're having these Skype calls. And they're getting more and more and more intense. And in the meantime, Putin is on state television going, you know, we have never doped, we don't dope anybody, you know, I mean, and this is going, I mean, this is real, and these, and this is, you know, this is worldwide now, and I'm on these intimate Skype calls with this guy who's telling me that Russia's going to kill him, and that he has secrets. Were you ever feel for, fearful for your own safety? Well, that came next. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, at this point, we had a friendship, and so it wasn't about uh, being a filmmaker, it wasn't about... You know, it was this obligation that I felt that I had to try to save this guy's life. So uh, I put a ticket, uh, his, his plane ticket, on my credit card. He had an, a visa, an American visa, because he had been lecturing here. And because it was five days after this thing breaks, somehow he's able to get out. And he gets to Los Angeles. We get him in a safe house. And I didn't realize that he was the great white shark. Uh, and, and so he gets here, and he's like, I've brought my hard drives, I've brought this. And over a period of about a month, the layers of the onion start peeling back and peeling back and peeling back. And it is, 
a thousand times what I could imagine. And, and this guy had basically been the mastermind of Russia's state-sponsored doping program. He had doped every single Olympic athlete, not, not just track and field, all sports. And this had been going on for the entire history of Russian sports. There's, there was never anti-doping in Russia. It didn't exist, ever. It was all just a front. Yeah. So you can basically say that pretty much every Russian Olympic medal, or at least the vast majority of them, they were obtained through this state-sponsored doping program. So I'm sitting on this information, and this is a mound of information. And it's evidence, and it's the blood, the bodies, it's the, it's the graveyard, it's, and he's the only person who has it. And as we're compiling this evidence, the two other people that he was working with on the other side both wind up dead within two weeks of each other of heart attacks, 52 and 59 years old. And so I'm, I, I'm scared. I mean, I'm truly, truly scared. And we're, ha and, and, you know, and this guy at this point is a friend. Uh, then the FBI and the Department of Justice get involved. They literally knock on his door at night in the middle of, of March. And now, so all of a sudden, the U.S. government's involved, and they still have no idea what has happened. They're just coming because they know he's fled the country, and he, he's, you know, in this big report. So um, we compile everything over six months, and Gregory and I go to the New York Times, and we spend three days with the New York Times, and five days later, it's, you know, worldwide news. But it still wasn't proven. So then all of a sudden I become the conduit because Gregory is in hiding. He can't talk. The FBI and DOJ is, you know, trying to work with him. There's all this other insanity. So all of a sudden, not, not only am I his mouthpiece, I'm in the middle between WADA, the IOC, and, and I'm the guy who is, who is facilitating uh, all of this evidence. And then, you know, it, it, you know, the investigation gets going and then, I continue making the film, essentially. Um, so it's a, it's a crazy story.